Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube, Ren here. So we are approaching Lunasa. It is time for another Sabbath tea. This is actually going to be the last uh, Sabbath tea that I am going to make, at least as far as this particular series goes. I started this at Mabin, um, and since we've gone all the way around the wheel now, this, this is the last one. So if you're just starting, if this is the first one that you've seen, all the other ones are there now, but um, but Lunasa is the last one I'm going to be making for a little while. I'll still be making other tea blends, of course. I am addicted to tea. I'm not going to stop making tea blends. They're just not going to be themed on the Sabbath, at least not anytime soon. But um, anyway, let's let's talk about this Lunasa tea. So uh, Lunasa, of course, is the first harvest festival. It is sometimes called the Feast of First Fruits. It's also known as the Grain Harvest. It's where we celebrate like bread. Um, I mean, let's just get right down to it. It's bread and beer and, you know, John Barleycorn, all of those things. So along that theme, I decided to make a tea that basically uses grains and seeds primarily um, as the majority of the um, components in this tea. So I've got my little recipe book here. Now, some of these components, they are not things that came from my garden. Some of them are, um, but they can be a little tricky to find. Hopefully you have a good um, international market near you. So I'm going to start with our first ingredient here, um, which is not from my garden here. And you may notice it is uh, got some nice little Korean packaging. This is roasted barley tea. So this is very popular in Asia, particularly Korea and Japan. Um, it's literally roasted barley that they then steep and make a tea out of. Very refreshing. Um, has a nice cooling nature to it. That's going to be the primary constituent of our tea because what better in Lunasa than to make a tea out of barley? It has that nice roasted nutty fragrance to it. So we're going to start with two parts of our roasted barley tea. You may notice that the spoon I am using this time is my little, this is actually a tea serving spoon. Each one of these is equivalent to about two teaspoons, but regardless, whatever your part is, that's what we're using, two parts of barley. So um, the next ingredient, and this is delightful, and I apologize, I don't have pretty packaging for some of this because I'm running out of space in my pantry. I need to figure out what I'm gonna keep and what I'm gonna make room for. But um, this is also not something I can grow in my garden. Oh, but it is amazing. This is cocoa nibs. So this is actually like, the seed of the chocolate plant and it smells just like chocolate so we've got that nice nuttiness from the barley and now that cocoa fragrance to it we're doing two parts of the cocoa nibs as well there we go. i lost a cocoa nib that's that's unacceptable so this is not chocolate chocolate. This is actually like the seed that chocolate is made from. So two parts barley, two parts cocoa nib. Our next one, we're gonna divide some of y'all. This is anise seed. Mmm, I love anise personally. It has a very um, licorice fragrance and aroma and flavor to it. So if you are not a licorice fan, you probably will not be too keen on this one. But one part of anise seed. Mm -hmm. And you may be thinking chocolate and anise, really? No, it works, trust me, it works. All right, our next ingredient, blackberry leaves. This is the one leaf that we're gonna have in here. And blackberry is just so emblematic of this Sabbath that I felt like I had to have it. So we're going to do one part of blackberry leaves. I'm just going to kind of mush that to make sure it fits in that spoon. That is good enough. I'm going to break that up into smaller pieces so that it will incorporate better. So the blackberry leaf doesn't have a whole lot of berry flavor to it. It mostly just has that little bit of astringency to it from the tannins, um, which kind of gives it... Um, gives the tea a little bit more body to it and makes it a little bit more like a tea because one of the things that, you know, actual tea has it is those tannins. All right, our last component here, this is coriander. Again, not, 
I do sometimes grow coriander. Um, the leaf is cilantro, the seed is coriander. They're from the same plant. Um, I can't grow cilantro because it's too hot here, but I can grow coriander seed. So we're just going to do about a half a part of the coriander seed. Um, and this also just kind of incorporates just a little mild sweet spiciness to it. Um, coriander always has sort of like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost sort of a citrusy kind of flavor to it to me. At least that's how I perceive it. Other people's palates may be different, but um, there we go. Mm. So this is our finished blend here. Mostly seeds, of course. There's just that little bit of leaf from the blackberry. Um, the aroma on this is like that chocolate is there, like it's definitively there, but it's sort of like just melded into everything else with that hint of anise underneath it. It honestly, to me, it smells kind of like a biscotti. Um, it smells like a cookie. <laughs> mm, it's really good. Um, this is a very enjoyable tea, obviously caffeine free. So if you have to avoid caffeine, this is a good one. This would be good hot or iced, which is good for those hot August months. Um, a lot of the ingredients in this tea also um, would be considered to be a galactagogue. And if you're not familiar with that word, it means making milk. So if you are someone who is lactating and want to increase your milk supply, this would be a good tea for you to make. Honestly, just staying hydrated is really the best thing. But if that tea helps, then it helps, right? So there we go. That is our Lunasa tea, our last tea in the series. Now, if any of you have ever bought tea from August Uncommon brand, you may recognize the um, a lot of the components of this are similar to their Cult of Demeter tea. And I will unabashedly admit that I basically just um, ripped them off for this idea. Obviously, there are a few extra things that they don't have in their tea, but um, mm, I mean, you know, if someone else has a good idea, why not just run with it, right? So um, now, of course, if you have a hard time getting any of these ingredients and you want to enjoy this tea, that also means that you can go to them and just purchase that tea. They obviously are not sponsoring me in any way, shape or form. I don't make any money from it, um, but it's a really good tea. So if you don't want to put in the work, that's a good alternative for you. So anyway, that's all I have for you on this one, our last Sabbath. I hope you enjoyed this tea. I hope you enjoyed this series. And as always, I'll be seeing you around soon.